Now, loft sorted. Um, the next step will be boarding up the ceilings because all the installations like plumbing, electrics, or first fix is done. Um, I have got to start 15 sheets of plasterboard, half inch, uh, 0.5 millimeters. So I'm going to start fixing it to the ceilings. Also, I have fixed all the buttons, uh, sorry, not buttons, skirtings that have been removed for either radiator tails or cabling, anything like that. So that's all going back in. And now I'm going to start with ceilings. Ah, whilst, whilst we're here and talking about or mentioning electrics, I have asked kindly a friend of mine, electrician, uh, to include him in these videos and his installation, but he has asked me not to. Um, the way he sees these videos, unfortunately, is a bit negative. He says that uh, there are too many um, couch experts that or sofa experts that um, basically not doing anything but know it all and uh, they always pick and and stir the trouble or just pick out basically like an internet fight with someone about some stupid silly thing where they're saying oh this is wrong or that's wrong or you should do it like this or you should do it like that and he just said he doesn't want to be part of that so i will respect him and uh, his choice and unfortunately for us on this build i'll have to exclude um, any details about electrics he will obviously he run first fix he will complete it all and he just asked me don't don't do it he will test it he's N ncic registered and um yeah he'll he'll sign it all off and test it but that's about it he said don't he said don't please include any of it into any of the videos so there you go you might see like a little clip like a socket there or cable here or there but that's about it i'm not gonna do any any commentary on it or any details now the story plastic volume series there are a few different options and ways how to do it if you do it by yourself. Um, one of my preferred methods is single-handed prop, little plasterboard prop. It's always handy. And a couple of dead men's. Dead men basically is a bit of wood with another bit of wood made along in a T-shape on top of it. So easy to make usually when you're on job there are always some bits of wood laying around uh, nothing special as long as you can take the weight of plastic This comes as 2.4 meters and our ceilings are slightly taller than that. Um, you can always put something, another bit of wood or something underneath just to, just to make it a bit taller. So I think this will be fine. Um, uh, let's make another one. Get some chunkier button. Maybe this one.
go. <laughs> Two dead mints. I will put little bits on the bottom as well just to raise it up. Let's go. Bits of this pattern. We'll chop it up. Just simple pieces of pattern again. is now perfect. Boarding of the ceilings, many of you know, always run plaster board across across your support. So either joisting or battens or whatever, whatever you got, always run across. Never run plaster board along, always run it across. Um, yeah, so these on so, load myself with screws number two always for plasterboard screws as they say proper preparation prevents this poor performance so. I'm going to use the first bed man rest it like that so I can rest plasterboard on it and then I can bring the other dead man to it and hopefully I'm not going to snap this point. This also allows you to move the board left right wherever necessary. Now, some people spend more time than I do on fitting these nice and parallel. I don't. I put them roughly every 400 centers, but they can be 380, 420, or whatever in between. Um, and the other kind of people, they also measure up and cut all the sheets on the middle of the button. I don't, for two reasons. It takes longer time to fit the buttons. Um, you, have, you end up by having very often lots of offcuts. So on a project like this, you might waste five, six sheets. Some of the offcuts you can use, but you're very limited where you can use them. So five, six sheets wasted straight away on a project like this, that's say 50, 60 pounds. Um, extra time spent on cutting, extra time spent on fixing the buttons. All in all, you're probably losing maybe three, 400 pounds um, just by fitting ceilings different. The way how I do it, I just put a sheet up. Start from one corner, against the wall, nice and square, and I put it up. 
Then I use offcut of the button, and I place the offcut of the button there, halfway on, uh, over the edge of the plaster board, fix plaster board to it, fix the button into joisting, and then put another piece into it. By doing that, um, I'm having an extra support there on that joint. I'm just literally putting an offcut button, which is much, much cheaper than tenth of the sheet of the plasterboard. One sheet of plasterboard is 10 pounds. One meter of 19 by 38 button is about 50 p. So having a few bits of button there, you don't even have to have a continuous button. You can have, say, three bits of, or three small pieces or whatever offcuts you have. You can utilize all the offcuts from these buttons into fixing uh, joints of the plasterboard. So just make sure that it's all there, so it's not touching anywhere. And then it's just fixing it. Make sure that you don't drive through through the paper, it has to sit flush with the face of plasterboard, but not through it because these plasterboard screws they got smooth uh, neck underneath the screw head and it's designed to actually crunk, uh, crushes the paper into the gypsum and that is what holds that sheet up if you run screw head through the paper and you braid the paper then what happens is you get like screw pops or nail pops in a plaster afterwards and that plasterboard is not fixed by that screw so if you put say uh, 30 screws up and 10 of them are going to the paper that plasterboard is only fixed with 20 screws because them 10 screws that is going that heads going to the paper they're not holding the plasterboard believe me so, very important don't leave it hanging down the head you'll touch it with your trowel sink it in flush with the board but don't break the paper coating Buttons. So I'm just gonna knock this sheet down. There we go. Let's try it out now. markings on the wall are not really uh, precise this Mr. Deadman is out of the way to put at least five to six screws in each line on the ceilings or half inch plasterboard. This one's got an angle. And 
to almost happen now. Probably there was a knot or something on the button and try to pull my, my screw on angle. Don't do it. Take it out, put the screw in or put it right to the side. Because screws on angle, they don't hold plastic board. You're just wasting, wasting screws. So much about proper preparation. <laughs> well, this guy's man is redundant. It's retired. Now we're going to do the jointing button. I'll bring this over. Right, let's. Um better. So I got a couple of cuts. is not long enough to go through. Then, what I'm going to 
do with couple extra screws sliding through joist above. Now that button is held from the joist and the plaster board is fixed to it. So I can just waste this or I could actually just cut it with a wrench. Also what I like to do, I like to stay in pass about 3 or 4 inches and then when I get next board on, I can fix that board to that piece of, plat uh, to that piece of button as well, so it locks all three together. screw into the joist. That's solid. Now I'm gonna cut strip for that. Two ways of doing that. One fast way would be for narrow strips or anything that you can reach. On, on this instance, is six inches. I could put blade of the knife, hook it on like that on edge of the tape. Put my thumb to it to hold it, and then run my finger against the board. from this side and I can actually pour it like that. So you don't need straight edge or anything. That's one way. The other way, obviously, is marking top and bottom and using level of straight edge and then cutting down. I use both, both ways and I always, I never or very rarely rip my board, always try tend to cut it crossways and even when I do the walls later on, you'll see I run my board horizontally as you would do with the floor and you start, start with one end and go to end, whatever is off cut, I start with off cut and do another upper layer. Literally like, like you would do flooring. Cutting like that on the ceiling and on the walls, I have absolutely zero waste in plasterboard. Because first of all, it costs money. Second, any rubbish you have to get rid of. 
and it's extra work for <laughs> extra measuring, extra cutting. So I don't like it, I just, just do it this way. I saw this 20 years ago from one dry liner. He would just use full sheets and uh, every time he comes to end like this because he would use uh, metal profiles he would just snip off little off cuts and he wouldn't even use profile all the way along he would just put three pieces like one end, middle and the other end and I tried it it works it works that way as well you can use a little box of ply, flooring, anything, any offcuts you have that you can put screw to it and that is not thicker than the fixing buttons. Just slide them up, fix it, fix another board to it and that's joined. Right, another sheet. Now I got that sheet there that I cut it off. I'm going to start from this end. If I start from other end, because I cut six inches off, it's only going to be six inches shorter than this sheet. My joint is going to be here, they're going to be too close. So if I start with that sheet from this end here, backed against this wall, then I'm going to be about one foot off from that side, which is more, uh, well, more pleasant to work with. So I'm just going to put this on uh, fast recording. So one room ceiling is done, um, as you can see there's one joint on that end, then there is one joint on this end, and one joint on that end there, uh, can the camera pick that up, yeah, and all I need to do is just fit one small piece there, which is five and three quarter by fourteen and three quarter, now all the offcuts I have I have three quarter sheet here that I'm going to start another room with that and I have these two small pieces this is four and a half inch and five inch I will use that somewhere in some other room when I get a small corner like that that I need a little piece and I will have some more offcuts little offcuts that I can use for there so I'm not going to cut a piece for there yet I'm going to utilize some of the wastage from other rooms and this is pretty much one room done and this is wastage I have. I could get stubborn and just use that and fit in there and then I'll have even less wastage in one room. That's what I was talking earlier about um, just starting with a full sheet, don't cut it, put a piece of wood uh, on a joint. So basically instead of bringing joint to the wood you bring wood to the joint of plasterboard and that's so easy so 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 easy and zero wastage as well so there you go guys I'm gonna now carry on in other rooms
rectified. This is another little helping hand. Again, just off cut off anything. I got off cut off uh, flooring here. Uh, don't fix it tight, fix it loose from one end and you can actually use that to rest that side of the that edge of the plasterboard as you as you're lifting up so you can just literally tuck it up on top of that and then bring the rest of the plasterboard up and pull the dead man underneath so there are all these little things what you can do when you fit plasterboard by yourself And this ceiling is almost done. I got eight, 18 inches square to put piece in there. I'm not going to cut it from whole sheet. I'll just wait for some offcuts that I can use because I'm gonna have some offcuts from bathroom or from this bedroom here. Um, I think it's enough for today afternoon. There's a bit of sunset going on there. It's getting dark in the house. This room here is getting dark, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so there you go. Ceiling done on my own. It's not too strenuous, it's not too hard, and you don't have many offcuts. Good that. Oops. Then a couple of bits in there, and that little strip there. So that's the way how I fit plasterboard. So tomorrow I'm gonna carry on on this ceiling here, that bar from there, and um, you can start with stud walls. Uh, got more plasterboard. This time is sound board, unfortunately seven kilos heavier than standard board. I got this for walls and have to offload my van in about half an hour because my daughter found second hand kitchen for the price of one cabinet. So it's worth it's worth worth a go. So I'll try it. Whew. My van was not this empty in a long time. Long, long time. Give me a chance to sweep the floor up. Here are all the buckets and bits, and here's all the tools. And as you can see, I'm not one of them posh builders. That everything has to be shiny and uniformed, only using certain type of the tools or whatever brand no i got revolt mostly cordless uh because i found that when i started buying them nearly 10 years ago i think the vault was much more advanced than others with cordless technology don't know it's my opinion
don't want to go into any. Before that, I was using Makita. And unfortunately, my whole van was emptied in one night um, by thieves. They didn't leave it as clean. And uh, I lost about, I had much more tools and uh, I lost about seven grand. So I had to replace it and I started replacing it and I tried different ones. I thought, because before that I had mostly Makita, uh, all my cordless tools. I tried the others and I thought, oh, I'll try Devolt. So I went with Devolt. And I think back in the day, I just thought that this, that, that they had about 10 years ago, they started a bit cheaper than others with lithium and they just been a bit better, I think. I don't want to start arguments on the internet, but anyway, that's Devolt, that's Makita, that's Bosch, that's Makita. I got Bosch chop saw in the van. Um, that's Evolution. 12-inch disc cutter, electric, absolutely brilliant, game-changer. Before that, I had steel, a uh, petrol one. So always you're looking for oil, for petrol, trying to start it, pulling the cord, brr, 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 it doesn't want to start. This, plug and play. Same with that Evolution mixer. I had that since... Um, since my tools have been stolen about, as I said, about 10, 11 years ago. And uh, I had a big Makita one, 350 quid I paid that back in 2008, I think, got stolen. So I got Evolution one, it was just over 100 quid back then, mixing everything with it, absolutely everything. Mixing pug, you'll see me mixing pug, screed, concrete. If I have to do just like one or two mixes of concrete, I'll do it with that. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And uh, just like buckets, small bits and bobs, some plumbing stuff. This is my little draper. Um, SDS Max breaker, brilliant thing. Brilliant. I had Hilti before. Yeah, same thing. Same thing, fractional price, same thing. So I'm going to sweep up my van, wait for my daughter to turn up, to give me a hand, and uh, I'll go to get the kitchen. Ooh, hey. And here, I'm back with kitchen cabinets. She chose right, I think. She chose white slub. It's a gloss white slub. Um, it's good reason that many suppliers do gloss white slab so we need to get some extra some additional cabinets or panels it is fine you can get them but to get this many cabinets it's got uh, one two three four five wall cabinets and then a corner cabinet there then another one and a sink cabinet and then another one two three base cabinets that's a lot all in all about a dozen cabinets and quartz wall top and sink it's brilliant absolutely brilliant for a price of one cabinet just one cabinet cost as much as all of this it looks a bit bit of mess now but it's actually in quite good condition i can work with this all the ceilings are done now the both bedrooms well, all apart from the hallway, I'm not going to board the hallway ceiling. It looks pretty flat. All I'm going to do is I'm going to skim it over uh, to hide or to cover that artex. So this is the lounge, kitchen, ceiling, bathroom, rear and front bedroom. They're all done. For some reason, um, well, I forgot to say, I actually realized, for some reason, I always start from the furthest corner of the room. <laughs> realized that because I've done the same in that room there, I've done the same in that room there, and the same in the um, 
this room here as well because I was bringing plasterboard from this end so that was the furthest perhaps if I was bringing plasterboard from this end here I would perhaps start from that end there I don't I, I don't know I just realized no particular reason for it it's just always starting from the furthest end I don't know I need to meditate on that and see why do I do that right now next step will be boarding up all the walls I have got soundboard which is um, here blue back or oh, blue paper board much denser um, this is GTEC one senior GTEC um, it, it's actually worth doing that especially on thin stud walls if you do a sound board on both sides it only costs about 15 20 percent more than normal board um, but it does reduce the sound because it is much denser it actually stops the sound before before it starts entering the wall cavity um, I will put insulation in there as well quilt I got there that ice over so I'm gonna have a sound board on both ends both sides and insulation between on this wall of the bedroom and on this kitchen bathroom wall as well just want to minimize any sound travel especially with these thin walls they're only three by two CLS um, yeah so well another thing when I do boards on the walls as you will see I don't do boards upright I personally I when I see people doing that <laughs> it just cringes in me <laughs> cringes me out I run boards across same you do same as you do on the ceiling when you have a ceiling joist you run board across not along the joist with studs I run board across the studs so I start from one end go to other end off cut start again or start from this with, with the off cut same like when you do flooring then you have staggered joints um, with the studs I actually tend to cut the board dead on center of the stud not the same story as when I do ceilings as, a, as you remember when I said I just let board on ceiling sail pass I over sail the joist or button then I put fixing button in on studs stud walls I actually cut it on, on the stud um, another thing worth mentioning always check your ceiling height when you're doing when you do run across um, because if your ceiling height is just over 2.4 meters if you sit first board on the floor you put second board on you will need to put sliver on the top and that's pain in the backside so check your height if necessary um, start with a top board literally put it on tight against the ceiling fix it on and then the bottom board tight up against it and then you'll have a little gap on the bottom which is fine that's going to be covered with curtain unless you are running coving around then you can have a little bit of gap on top because coving is going to break it or cover it but um, I, I always prefer to jack it up up tight against the ceiling now if your ceilings are 2.4 or, or just below it doesn't matter because then you can just sit your board down on the floor run first first board across and then the second board you'll just have to trim to the height of the ceiling and that's about it I'll have a quick cuppa and um, then I'll get on get on with it I've just measured down from the ceiling to uh, 1.2 meters and get the this off the of flooring as a rest so I can rest plaster board on whilst I'm fixing it. I'm still using my almost year old now plaster board carrier. Probably one of the best things I made to be honest.
There's only one thing I could change on it, on this plasterboard carrier. I need to make handle a bit longer, so I actually have it maybe there. So I don't have to bend down as much. That's probably the only thing I could change on it. see the ceiling, ceiling, original ceiling, joisting and everything, it's way out, way out. Let me just tap one screw and see what we're going to do about it. I think I'm going to scribe that plasterboard. I'm not overly fast about making it go well. It's only ceiling and a little bungalow. You can see some of my other videos where I'm actually making ceiling level with buttons. It's taking extra time and I don't want to do this here. Um, so let me just see, that's that. Okay. I'm just going to use this little off cut to button. See that in there is probably the same height as that. So, I'm going to do this. Take it down, cut that. I'll have to put a little piece of button on top of this actually to compensate for that. And it will be a perfect fit. Standard plasterboard sheets, half inch, they're 25 kilos. This one is around 32, I'm not quite sure. Around 32 kilos. Uh, six and a half, seven kilograms. I can definitely feel that. That's what makes this board more soundproof because it's denser. The dense material is what stops airborne sound. Then filling starts out with this insulation, it quilt, that will make it more sound absorbent and that should stop uh, knocking like wall borne sound as well, surface borne sound as well as airborne. The board thing is leaving voids within the wall for soundproofing because the void will act as a drum. You can actually amplify you can actually amplify the sound. So for soundproofing.
story, don't break the paper. I think you should note this before people go mad and have a go at me on the internet. Cutting out for the sockets, they always either mark it up just a little cross or I drill a hole or whatever. Once plasterboard is fixed, then I use a multi tool and cut neatly around the sides of the socket so we don't get any discrepancies between the hole in the plasterboard and the hole in the socket or hole socket hole hole for the box on the back back box um, <clears throat> yes you can always measure off the neighboring sheets and all that but on the end of the day you can be it can happen that it's fine out or whatever and that's pain in the backside when it's finishing um, so I do cut it out with a multi-tool now people will say oh you will cut the cable you'll damage the insulation on the cable Blah blah blah. I always use blunt, blunt blade. So blade that has been worn out, usually with a fine teeth, that's been completely worn out, and it's just like a, like a table knife, butter knife, to say. And it's just using a force and vibration of the tool itself to go through through the plasterboard. When it touches the wire, it just vibrates the wire as well. So it does not cut into insulation. I'll show you that as well. So this is my cross, so that's about center of the socket. So I'll just do a little hole there first, so I can feel edges of the, uh, of the box. There it 
this. Now I can see and I can feel it. I can go a bit. Now, using this again, blunt edge, it's literally square. I'm just pushing the way I rested the blade on, on top of the inside of the box and I'm just gliding it until it hits the right hand side of the box so I know that's where my vertical cut is going to be. You can see the wires, whoops, uh, flush off. You can see the wires, no cut on them at all. So they'll go back in. I'll show you another. <coughs> Because that's what people say usually, it's like, oh, you'll cut it there or whatever. Right, let's try. See? No cuts, just dusty. See here? No cuts. See? And also here. No damages. So as long as you use really blunt blade and just don't go mad, don't go, don't push it in and force it against the cable. Just go about half inch in and just chop it about, and you have a nice neat hole cut out. There you go. It's just I just thought. I, got, I do many of these little things and I don't even think about them anymore but then I just thought after I was uh, cutting one before this ah someone might say oh you're using multi-tool to cut it you'll cut the cable you'll damage insulation you'll do this and that no 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 as long as you use blunt blade you're absolutely fine there you go now all plasterboard is finished, completed, it's all cleaned up, swept up. I drilled the holes up where the down light's gonna be. And the fan, it's all cleared up. Uh, and this room here, the only bit what's left now, I need to treat these timbers here, insulate and then I'm gonna board that up as well. That's why I got that extra board there. And these are the offcuts. I'll probably use it somewhere in the uh, front and rear porch. And this is my plasterboard rubbish. And that includes an old plasterboard cutout for the lights. So not even full bags. That's from, from entire bungalow. So there you go, that's how much of rubbish you can produce in the end, barely nothing, barely nothing. As long as you follow the system as when you do flooring, you start with a full sheet and then 
whatever is off cut you just carry on and don't trim them don't don't trim them on a the joist just put an extra button you can literally see there that's the line of the joist that's the line of the joist and then that's our joint there same here you can see it with screws you can see the line going there there's another line just left of the cable and that's our joint there it's easy and to be honest with you in the last 25 years this method never failed me never so there will be some people saying oh no that's wrong you should do this you should do that i'm telling you this never failed me never had a crack feeling on the joints like that that's that's for sure we had it once where original joists have been undersized on old house they had cracked ceiling plaster laughs then we buttoned it out we put plasterboard on plastered it and it cracked again and then after about a bit of head scratching and checking we lifted the floorboards up upstairs and checked the size of the joists and they're not being big enough for the span so the floor was springy and that's why it cracked apart from that nothing wrong with what you what you saw here